when you get your louvers or your um, posts rather out of the box, they'll come bare like this. These are L brackets uh, already installed, even though in the instructions it does say otherwise. Um, so what I like to do, just to make it a bit easier, prop it up on a box or something. You take your foot plate, make sure that the countersink part is facing outwards. Line that up with the four holes there. And then you've got these countersink screws, which will be in one of the bags in the hardware box. And you literally just thread those in. You see if you do two opposite and then it'll hold itself in, you can get the other two in with the impact. And then that's the foot plate installed. And on the other end, again out of the box, these six holes here will have these bolts pre-installed in them. All you need to do is just remove all of those because those are what will be used to fix the frame um, once it all goes up. So you just take all of those out before you go any further. As you're ready to put the frame up, um, you take your, in the case of a 3x4 like this, decide which um, side you want your winder to go on. In this case, you can see here, this is where the drive shaft slots in and there's a little box on the back to indicate that. Um, so you get that laid out in the correct side. You can see here I've already installed one of the legs. So you basically slot the leg into the top of the post and reinstall those three bolts, which I'll now show on this side. So you've got your three holes, which I previously took the bolts out of, the three corresponding holes on the beam. Get those lined up, at which point you can put the bolts in. I like to just do them loose to start with. And then just make sure that that angle there is a nice right angle before you go ahead and tighten them all the way. So next up, you take one of the three meter sides, which are the ones without all of the little cutouts for the louvers. And it doesn't really matter which end you start on, but that will slot in same way as the other one did, but obviously facing upright. And this can be a little bit fiddly, just trying to hold the, hold the um, beam upright as you put these bolts in. And I have to wiggle it around a little bit sometimes just until the holes line up. Once they're all started in, you can tighten them up. And at that point, we're ready to stand it up between two people and attach the third leg to the end of that beam, at which point it'll freestand before we uh, go ahead and put the rest up. So we'll have that one upright so that that leg then is basically, as we pick it up, it's ready to then put that leg on. And then once three legs are on, it'll freestand and it just makes it easy to work around the rest of it where you're not trying to hold it up and balance it. So you can just pick that up in your end, sort of slide it across as you go. Get it roughly into position. And then Wayne's got the full weight of that. Whilst I come over, get my step ladder into place. And 
fix this beam on this post rather. No, that's okay. Install the three bolts at the top, same as on the other ones. So that's now freestanding, Wayne can let go of that and we don't have to worry about it falling over whilst we prepare the next bits. So next up, taking the other three metre side and I need that. So what I'm going to do is put it on the other leg whilst it's on the floor, making sure that it's in the right orientation when it goes up. sure that that's a nice right angle between the two pieces and then tighten them up at which point this unit is now ready to put up along here we'll pick it up I'll hold this end up whilst Wayne puts it into position on that corner and then same as with all the other corners three bolts up in that top piece to hold it all together And again, just make sure that there's a nice right angle between the two pieces before tightening them up. Get the last four meter beam in, which again has all the little cutouts for the louvers in it. And we'll reinstall this on the last side. Same as all the others. Just making sure it lines up with those three holes. Yeah. And then putting the bolts in. So next up, you've got these L-shaped brackets and the associated bolts. There should be eight of these in a little bag. All we want to do is take these out of the packets and each of the top corners, one of these will sit on top with two bolts going through to hold it in, which I'll show you. So these plates just sit on top of here and bolt through each hole. Again, do them up loosely to start with, just until you've got both threaded in. And then once they're both seated, you can tighten them up. And you just do the same on every corner. So next up we've got these four rubber inserts, which just pop into the top corners here. So you want to make sure that this piece that sticks up is facing inwards, and they just sort of slot into place up there, nice and easy. But the bit that sticks up have that pointing inwards, and they just slot inside the leg and just push into place. So you've got, these are your gutters slash light bars. Um, you'll have two three metres and two four metres. doesn't matter which way around they go, they all, uh, they're all the right direction with the connectors. That it doesn't, it doesn't matter which orientation you put them up in, they'll only go in one way. So on the back side of the gutter, there's this little hooked piece that runs all the way along the length and that will slot into this little groove along the beam here. So if I pass that end to Wayne, and all you do is you butt them up to the rubber connect, the rubber inserts at each end, yeah. and just make sure that that's slotted in all the way along. And you'll see at the ends here, they just butt up nicely to the, in, uh, to the rubber inserts. This bit will hook over the top, but we'll wait until we've got all four um, gutters in place before we hook those over. Now doing the same again for the four metre side, goes up in the exact same way, just making sure that it butts up to the rubber on each end. Good. Yep. yep. And then now that we've got both pieces up to this corner, what I can do is 
hook this over. So there are these little tabs on the rubber that just lift and hook over the top just to hold the gutter down. And then you'll find a connector on either end of the light strip from each piece and they just push together and then you go in in one direction. And then this piece screws on just to make it a watertight seal for the connection. At which point you can sort of just tuck these down into the gutter out of the way. Whichever corner you want your um, plug to be coming out for the lights, you don't want to make sure that you don't join the two connectors in that top corner because that's where we'll attach the, uh, the rest of the wiring for the lights. So in this case we're doing it in this corner. So we'll install the bar as normal. First. Sometimes they can be a bit tight on this last one. Install that as normal. Wayne will do the connectors at his corner. Cool. So next we've got the power connector for the lights. Um, you see it's got these joins at various points so you can separate the cable. You've got the transformer near the plug and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to twist and disconnect just a bigger version of the connectors in the corners at the top. Separate that and put the transformer aside for now. I'm then going to unravel all of this and after being packaged, this cable tends to have quite a lot of kinks in it, so it's worth spending a minute just straightening it all out by hand. It just makes it easier to feed down through the leg. So through the centre of that rubber insert that we put in earlier, there's a hole, and we're just going to feed it all the way down until I feel the wire hit the bottom. At that point, it's reached the bottom, so I'll just rest this down here for now. Whilst we fish the end of the cable out from the bottom. So this bit can be quite tricky. Um, often takes a lot of um, moving the wire around. This is the drain hole. Sometimes it'll come out nice and easily, sometimes it won't. But it's basically a case of just fishing the bottom of the cable out through that drain hole. Came out nice and easily that time, but can take a while. And at that point, you just want to feed it through as far as it'll come without pulling on it too tightly. And we can now come back up to the top here and where the receiver splits off into two separate wires, these two will then join in to the light strips, same as on the other corners, and we just tighten those up. and then we can poke this cable down the hole a little bit further and then the receiver box just gets tucked in to the guttering up here just so it's out of sight. We can reattach the transformer. And that just connects to this cable, same as all the others have and tightens up. At which point we're ready to plug this into the power and use a little remote to turn on all the lights. So next, you have your little remote here in a little bag. Comes with some instructions for all the different modes. Point that up at our receiver, turn it on, and you see the lights start flashing different colours. And you then have lots of different colours that you can change it to. And there are various sort of flashing modes as well that you can cycle through. So you'll have three different types of louvers included. The majority of them are these ones. These are the common louvers. And these will have one of these little rolling pins on each end. And most of them are all like that. We have two that are different. One of them will have a pin, a rolling pin on one end but not on the other end. And the final louver will have nothing on either end. 
The one with nothing on either end is used as your centre louver. And the one with a roller on just one end is used as the drive louver. The drive shaft will be attached to this one in a moment. So we're starting off with the drive louver, which is the one that has a roller on one end, but nothing on the other. This square piece is the drive shaft, and all we're going to do is take the nut and washer off of the threaded part on the end, put the thread through the little square hole on the end, and then reinstall the nut and washer. And we'll tighten those up until this is all one solid piece. And that is now fixed in place. So this is the drive louver with the drive shaft sticking out this end and one of the slots here where the uh, winder is on the outside will have a little square hole in it which this drive shaft will insert into. So what we want to make sure is that the other end is up above. Whilst I put the drive shaft in, rotate it a bit until you feel it go all the way in to the, uh, the gearbox at which point we can then make sure that this side just slots in to the slot on the opposite side. That little roller just fits into the slot and it'll fix into place. So next up we've got the centre louver, which is the one that doesn't have a roller on either end, just two square holes here and here. So you'll have these two pins which will attach to this and hold it into place. We can disregard one of them for now, just put that in your pocket. The other one will install the same as we did on the drive shaft with the drive louver. Just take the nut and washer off and then put it back on through the hole and tighten it up. Doesn't matter which end you do first. And then what you want to do is unscrew this silver piece on the end and again just pop that in your pocket for now. So now with one pin installed on the end of the centre louver you want to make sure that it's the same orientation as the driving louver which we already installed so you just want to make sure that these little uh, tabs that stick up on the ends are pointing in the same direction as the one we've already installed. Now that pin on the end will fit into a corresponding hole about halfway along the pergola just up there. So I'll climb up here and fit it into that slot, at which point it can sit there whilst I tighten up this side here. So at this point we'll take the other uh, pin for this end, just going to unscrew the silver piece, pop it on there and the nut and washer from the other end which I can also just rest there. So you want to slide that piece through the hole and then this silver piece will fit in the hole on the outside and we can just thread those back into each other until it's finger tight. Yeah, give it a little push just to make sure it's on there. We can then lift this louver up, it's just been resting on the gutter and slide the, uh, the pin back into it making sure that that square hole goes over the, uh, over the peg and we can just reinstall the, uh, the nut and washer to tighten it all up. To finish it off we'll take the other silver piece which we put in our pocket earlier it's easier to do this on the impact driver. Put it in that hole, make sure that it goes onto the thread that's already in there. And just tighten that up. And that is the centre louver completed. So now just making sure that they're all pointing the same way as the drive louver and the centre louver that we've already installed. These just slot in on the rollers. Just want to continue this process all the way along, making sure that they're all pointing in the same direction.
So next up, we're going to be installing these bars down the sides, which connect all of the louvers together so that they all move as one. Uh, for that, you're going to need one of these bars, which has all the holes in it. And you've got these three packs here, one with all the um, bolts, one with the nuts, and one with these plastic washers in. So what we do with these is this long bar will slot alongside, go sort of between the louvers and this piece here, just slots down into place. It'll sort of move around a bit whilst we're building. Next thing to do is making sure that they all line up from the end. It's easiest, I find, to start on the one that's fixed to the winder, the drive louver, just because it doesn't move as freely as the other ones and it keeps them all fixed in place. So making sure that the, uh, the bar has the little lip facing outwards at the top, we're going to stick a bolt through the hole. Then you want to put one of these little plastic washers on and then it goes through the hole in the louver, at which point we can put the nut on the back and tighten them up. And you just want to carry that on all the way along the full width of the pergola. Bolt goes through the rail, washer on the other side, then they go through the hole in the louver, at which point you can put a nut on the other side. And then once you've done all of these all the way along, you can go ahead and tighten them all up. So this is your winder for the roof mechanism. So this will just slot into place up here and you turn it a bit and it'll slot into place, you'll feel it click in. At that point it's tight and you can use it to open and close your roof louvers just by spinning it. The reason that the uh, winder is on the outside rather than sticking straight down is just so that it allows you to have a blind fitted into this side, uh, whereas the previous design wouldn't have allowed for that. So these are the new style integrated blinds. Um, the main blind unit here and these are the two legs that go with it. Now there's a small amount of disassembly required before we start so along each leg there are these four small allen headed bolts which we just need to remove to start with. Once those are removed, this side bar here will slide away from the rest of the leg and that can be removed and set aside for now, as can this inner plastic piece which also just slides out. And we'll do the same with the other leg. So for the next bit it's easiest to pop the blind up on ladders or trestles of some kind just while we pop the legs on. So rest that there. And then we'll take one of the legs which we've already removed the other piece and the inner plastic piece from. And this will just fit. It's got a little opening there, making sure that this piece is facing the floor. With this bit, this little tab that sticks out towards the bottom. That will just slide like that and the same on the other side. Right. You ready? Yep. So once those legs are on, what we can do is we can, with a person on each end, lift it up into place, bring the legs inside of the legs of the pergola, and then up the top here we just want to make sure that it all lines up and we fit the blind into place at the top here, making sure it's flush with the outer leg of the outer edge of the pergola here. Once we've got it in place, there are these four holes up the length of the leg. And all we're going to do is take one of our self-tapping screws and again making sure that the outer edge of this leg is flush with the pergola. We're just going to screw these into the leg of the pergola so that it's all fixed in place and same on the other side. So 
So next we're going to take the plastic piece that we removed earlier and this white uh, zip looking piece up here just needs to fit down the centre channel on this plastic here. So we're just going to slide that up and make sure that it slots into place. And then down the bottom here sometimes helps to sort of bow it out a little bit, it's quite flexible. And this clips into place in the centre at the bottom. And then these little rubber tabs, or a foam rubber, just need to make sure that they slot in to the inside of the, uh, of the lip on the leg here. So we've now got the metal piece which we also removed earlier. And you'll see there's a lip running all the way up the length of it. And what we need to do is make sure that that lip fits into this corresponding groove on the leg and that it also, the, uh, the lip on this side, fits over the, uh, the foam pieces, same as before. It can be a little bit fiddly getting these in. It's often easier to line it up at the top first and then slowly work your way down, just pressing it into place so that that lip goes into the groove down the entire length of the leg. And then once that's done, we can reinstall the four screws that were removed earlier. Just going to reinstall those four bolts that we took out at the start, all the way up the length of the leg. And then just to finish these off, we've got these little rubber inserts, which we can just use to cover up the screw holes, stop any water getting through. Uh, so then, just going to check that the blinds pull down all right, just grab it from the centre here, and then pull it down and just make sure that it goes up and down smoothly. plastic rail, we've got this little channel running down the middle and we just want to make sure that this white bit goes into the centre of the channel. So we'll just slide it up and it'll just feed its way in. Again making sure that these foam bits are tucked into the lip. Bend the, rubber, uh, bend the plastic slightly just so that it fits in at the bottom. You'll hear it snap into place and again just tuck these foam pads into the lip. Once again grab it from the middle, just test it by pulling it down. Make sure that it goes smoothly all the way to the bottom and that seems all good.